Hey guys, what's going on? Josh is down here with another video for you guys. Um, this time, it's actually going to be a series of videos on how to install slash host your own Rust server and install Oxide on that as well, which is a server mod. Because Rust, the game, is fun itself, but adding these mods um, just adds a whole new aspect to the game, which makes it insanely fun, especially when you're playing with friends. And so that's the point of this video, is to have your own server that you customize and you mod yourself so your friends can all play and have fun, rather than trying to pick and choose some servers and then, you know, hackers getting in that and, you know, you losing all your stuff after six hours of work, and that's just not fun. That's the only reason I initially did this, is because, you know, I got tired of other people's crap. Uh, first thing you want to do is actually buy the game Rust. Uh, it's only 20 bucks on Steam. You can wait till the summer sales or winter sales because sometimes they get cheaper. But right now, I mean, 20 bucks is nothing. So go ahead and buy the Rust game itself. I've never tried this on a cracked version of Rust, but you're more than welcome to. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the link for the cracked version of Rust. Um, so once you have Rust, the next thing you want to do is get the Rust server files. Now, they were released by the developer, and so it's totally legit. And I'm going to link you to the server files in the description so you can go ahead and download it. There's two ways of doing that. The primary way of doing that is through Steam CMD, which Steam CMD is a command DOS version of Steam itself. And using Steam CMD, you can put in commands to download specific games or betas that you can't normally do with the regular Steam. So I'm going to show you how to do it through the Steam CMD version first. And what you go ahead and do is click the link in the description to go download Steam CMD. And once you've downloaded it, it'll be in this folder right here. Um, I'm going to be showing you in my extra hard drive right here that's completely blank um, how to do all this to make it real easy. And what you want to do initially is make a folder for Steam CMD, because this is what it's going to install and extract in. And so once you do that, go ahead and take the file that Steam CMD and plop it in there. Once it's there, go ahead and run it as administrator and it'll start installing. And that's it. As you can see, it totally installed real quick and everything's all good to go. Uh, so first thing you want to do to download these files is you can log into your account by doing this, but sometimes it gives you a little bit of errors doing that. Even though I bought the game, it still says that I don't own it when I try to download these files through it, which I've tried before. So the easiest way to do it is to log in as anonymous, which you just type in login anonymous. And then bam now you're logged in anonymously once you've checked that and bam you're good to go so next thing is to go ahead and click the link for the rust server files that's in the description right now and then you're gonna go ahead and type that in so once you've typed that in it'll start downloading and you'll see it working just like this now this download is about four or four and a half gigs so, if you don't have a fast internet connection, prepare to be, you know, waiting for a little bit. Um, the good thing about Steam is when you download, once it starts, you know, initializing its own download, uh, you can download it basically the max speed your internet provider lets you, rather than it being capped at all. Um, so mine's roughly at about 5 megabytes a second. Um, so, I'll go ahead and skip ahead, and once this is done, I'll let you know. Just a quick insert here. Um, again, if you can't get Steam CMD to work or download or it's giving you any kind of errors at all, I went ahead and did the favor of uploading all the files individually in RAR format so you can download them and extract them yourself. Um, you could also, I'm also going to link them in the description so you can download them there as well. Alright, I'm back here and it's just about finishing up that download. I'd say a couple minutes have passed, maybe like two minutes area. And uh, you'll know when it's done when it says success down there. Now, where it downloads to is in Steam Apps, Common, and then there's your file. Rust Dedicated is the dedicated server files released by Gary. And so these are the files that you'll need. Now, you won't need all of them in here. The main one you're going to be using is Legacy. So what I recommend is because sometimes, you know, I messed up a lot trying to make the server stuff run. Now, it's always good to have a backup of everything. Basically, the only one you're going to be using is Legacy. So what you want to do is copy it and then bring it back down to the very 
root spot of your dry, which since I'm using bonus space, I'm going to put legacy right here. It's only a gig, so when it copies, it's much pretty fast. So what I'm going to do is keep it called legacy. And once you have it here, there's your Rust server. Now, when you double-click Rust server, that's when your server is going to initialize, and then it's going to be up and running. But you have to do it once because, see, there's not a lot of folders here. When you run it, which I always run everything as administrator, so I always set it to run as administrator. When you run it, it'll look like it's actually running the game itself. So you don't necessarily need to have it full screen or anything like that. And then you're going to see this box. It's always going to be black. And then here's your server. Allow it to use your networks if you ever want to share it with people. And then it'll load everything. It'll say it's not going to find a bunch of files. And then bam, server initialized. And that's the first run. It's going to look all messed up like this. What you do is just go ahead and close it. It closes them both. And then now you see more files were created, which is this is the exact amount of files you're going to want to need right here. Now, that's the end of part one. Part two is how to configure it and get it up and running and connect to it so you can do that fluently back and forth to test your mods and whatnot. So go ahead and if you want, click the video up in the top right to go ahead and click on part two. Uh, go ahead and click the video at the top left to see other videos that I've made before because I don't just do server making videos. I make a lot of things. Um, and the bottom right here, just go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so you can see new videos once I pump them out. It really helps out. But other than that, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.